Thanks very much, Tane. It has been a, a wonderful process uh, that developing these standards uh, for ecological restoration practice for Australasia and, and mainly for practice in Australia. And as Tane said, it, it took three years, um, a lot of uh, work to really integrate a, um, five rounds of comments, public exhibition type comments, that sort of thing. And basically these standards identify the principles that underpin ecological restoration philosophies and the methods and outlines the steps required to plan, implement, monitor and evaluate a restoration project to increase our likelihood of success. It's relevant to a wide range of projects and is applicable to both terrestrial and aquatic systems. Um, as Tim mentioned, it was produced by the Society of Ecological Restoration Australasia and its partners, which are essentially 12 NGOs um, and ideally um, aimed at the adoption by everyone. Let's face it, community, industry regulators, land managers, whether they're private or public, all levels of government, and it's all in there to really raise the standards of ecological restoration and rehabilitation. So restoration really being the process of assisting the recovery of degraded areas with the goal that we're looking for full recovery of these systems. And rehabilitation where, the pro where it's more about the process of reinstating ecosystem functionality in a degraded site where perhaps um, restoration is not the aspiration. It's a great document, it's really comprehensive, it's about 50 pages long and it's got four core sections, an introduction, um, uh, six key principles which I'll touch on in a moment, um, the standards themselves which really guide again the, the process of restoration all the way from planning to implementation, monitoring, evaluation and then maintaining our sites. Um, it has a, a whole lot of uh, tables and diagrams and a set of um, really great supportive appendices. So, key principles. First one, ecological restoration is based on an appropriate local indigenous reference ecosystem. Ecological references identify the particular terrestrial or aquatic ecosystem that is that target. This involves describing the specific compositional, structural and functional attributes before we can really say restoration has been achieved. So when we're trying to develop our targets and really understand what are our goals, it's always great to um, look at that reference ecosystem and really harness what it is that we're aiming for with all the different ecosystem attributes. Number two, restoration inputs will be dictated by the level of resilience and degradation. So you can see here on this table, on that vertical plane, it's really all of those variable functionality of ecosystems. So whether it's the soil, whether it's species composition, whether that's that relationship between um, plants and animals, that whole complexity of sites, and whether it's you know, kind of really degraded or um, fully functional. And then you look at that ecosystem degradation, so again, is it sitting here at that full level of de degradation or is it quite intact? Assessing those things, which I think we know requires an enormous amount of skill. Enormous amount of skill to get in there, assess the site, look at all of the ecosystem's attributes and really try and work out what is happening on that site so we as practitioners and scientists can really understand where and how we need to intervene. It's understanding that that process and where we get in there and have a go, which determines are we going to have to reconstruct the site from scratch, <coughs> excuse me, or are we coming somewhere in the middle, facilitating the recovery through assisted regeneration, perhaps it's larger scale weed control that really kickstarts the process again, or is it that it's a natural regeneration approach where perhaps we just need to take away um, a small impact um, perhaps, you know, we need to fence cows out of a remnant or something like that and that recovery is always um, or is much more easy to facilitate. The third principle is about the recovery of ecosystem attributes and that's facilitated again by identifying clear targets, goals and objectives. So a restoration project will have a greater transparency, uh, manageability and improved chances of success if restoration targets and goals are clearly defined and translated into measurable objectives. 
This involves describing the specific compositional, structural and functional attributes before we can really say restoration has been achieved. This wheel is often used to assess the outcomes of our site, but it can also really assist um, managers in particular or really skilled practitioners who have a, a good familiarity with the site and the goals of the site to really understand how we're progressing on that track towards restoration. So you can see in there there's an absence of threats uh, category or attribute. Uh, there's uh, physical conditions, species composition, community structure, ecosystem function and ecosystem exchanges. So even if um, perhaps we're looking at the absence of threats and again perhaps we went, oh we've got really bad pollution on our site, we've got constant rubbish flowing in and you're able to perhaps restore some creek systems upstream or perhaps you're able to um, construct a gross pollutant trap or something like that that really started to prevent that pollution coming into your site then we can start to change that scoring mechanism on there. Now you can see there's a one to five category there. That's like a star system, um, just as we would do the movies, where you can really start to score um, the site and those ecological attributes. So for instance, when you've formed your goals and your targets and everything else, which obviously assists us in developing our plans and design for the project and how we're going to implement it. This is something that we can use along the way to identify, are we getting towards those goals? Are we on our way? Have we achieved the outcomes that we're trying to achieve on a site? So that manager or skilled practitioner can come in and colour in those different segments. As you can see there, there's a young restoration project um, that's been filled out and then a mature rehabilitation project where perhaps some function can be put back into a site. And perhaps that's the full extent of achievement on this particular site. We all get very familiar with our sites and it's a really great way to perhaps take ourselves out of it and really reassess a site to, and look at it objectively and really analyse it in relation to those um, objectives that we had. So I think um, I, I've started to apply this to a site and I found I had a really, really large site and I, could, I found that I had different ones of these for different zones. So where I had to, um, we had to really reconstruct a zone and do some um, planting and really put in those, uh, facilitate those processes again. I had quite a different one of those, whereas in another part of the site where we were assisting regeneration through some really good and strategic weed control, it looked quite different. Um, I also think it would be a great way to demonstrate the changes, whether it is to regulators, managers, funding bodies, whoever it is, looking at the changes of that site. There's a really wonderful detailed table that breaks down those six attributes a whole lot more and provides a bit of an example around um, the, that five-star rating. So, for instance, looking at species composition and you've got your reference site, if you've only got one star, well, really, maybe you've only got about 2% of the um, species that are on your reference site. So the wonderful thing about that is there's a, there's a long way to go and, a, and um, a lot we can do to really facilitate the recovery. Conversely, if we're sitting up around a five-star rating, there's perhaps 80% of plants and, and maybe the critters are really back in the site. It's being utilised. It, and the potential for colonisation of further recovery is in on that site. Um, and you've got a five-star rating. It doesn't mean that we can walk away, as I think we all know in this room. We've tipped the balance enough to know that we still need to maintain these sites. And even if it is sitting at 90% or 95% of species recovery, we still need to protect that site. So there's still some ongoing management that's required. But that's that five-star rating, and that's actually set out in the standards for um, each of the ecosystem attributes. So the other key principles, one is full recovery is the goal of ecological restoration, even if it takes a long time. Number five is restoration science and practice are synergistic. And six, as I think again we know here, and particularly in this audience, is that social aspects are critical to successful ecological restoration, whether that's um, continued support, support for our project and or con um, continued protection. 
So just one other component um, worth mentioning, it's obviously hard to um, put a comprehensive document like this into a quick 10, 12 minutes. And um, so I just wanted to say that section three is also a wonderful section that really takes us through the whole um, assessment and planning for restoration. So it's, it's a six page part of the document. It's very detailed and it really facilitates um, us really going through that process of planning and designing the restoration project, really assessing the site, implementing that project, how we might monitor, document and evaluate our program and then those post um, implementation maintenance that we might need to do as well. So the sponsors um, for the standards are, are just listed up there. Again, Arbor was a sponsor in that and these sponsors really helped um, get some money together to, to take it to the next level. Um, and that's where you can find it. Um, go to the uh, Society of Ecological Restoration Australasia website um, and you can download a PDF there. Um, wonderful document, happy reading and really happy applying it to all of our sites because the goal really is to see what we can do to continue to get better and succeed in our ecological restoration projects. Thanks very much. Thank you.